Hello? Fox say. He's back, bitches. For fuck's sake. The triumphant return of disembodied orgasm. Tara! God! We also have a little Egg McMahon hanging out back here. She's kind of sleeping. Hello, Miracle. Hi, baby. You can't hear. Yeah, I envy her right now. <laughs> we put the... Dan put the... Hippo got love hugs one in front of her before and she was just like looking at it and then looking at him and like she was like I don't get it. What's it doing? I, I understand I I I can't I the cat and I we think alike. I realized today she kind of looks like Pikachu. Cause she doesn't usually perk her ears up because she can't hear, so she's not pointing them towards anything. So her ears are usually kind of pointed out and her eyes get really big. She's not terribly light sensitive, so the irises of her eyes are usually, or her pupils rather, are usually pretty dilated. So I'm like, you kind of look like a little Pikachu. Or she looks like a little stoner. Because they, <laughs> they have those exact same... Oh, I got grumbled at. I disturbed her. Did I disturb you, your majesty? I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn to... it. Yeah. We have a considerably grumpier cat now. Hey, baby. She's like, what, what, what's happening? Say hi to the internet. Show them how you look like Pikachu. I don't look like Pikachu. I look like a kitty who wants to go back to sleep. <laughs> Let me go! <laughs> okay, bye-bye, kitty. She's like, fuck off! She's uh, a little grumpier than she was. A little bit. I think I... I She's I like a little older, a little little grumpier. <sighs> She's like, just, just let me sleep. Let me lick my butt and go to sleep. Which is kind of, you know, how we all feel when we reach a certain age. <laughs> yep. so... And now she's licking her butt. She's a very... Living the dream. ...busy schedule of eating and licking her butt and sleeping. Living the dream. So this week, um, I have no other subtitle for this collection, but just stupid! There's less crazy this week, and just, just plain, you fucking idiots. And, okay. what? Good. Good? Yeah. You like, you, you're like, oh good, just imbeciles. I should know we have red drapes because we're turning this room into like a Twin Peaks Black Lodge theme thing. I found this bitchin' black and white wallpaper at Target, so we got our red drapes and like black trumpet lamps, so it's going to be like the Twin Peaks lounge. Which, that probably shouldn't be something you want to turn your um, house into. It's going to look awesome. Yeah, but it's a bad thing. The Black Lodge. Whatever. <laughs> but that's not a place you want to live. It's just our bar office area. Technically, it's the dining room, but Dan has like a gigantic, elaborate, fully stocked bar over here, and I have my computer, so. All right, first one of you gets possessed. Don't come crying to me. <laughs> It'll make for a great show that week. And yeah, we'll be sitting here. Hi, Tara, how you doing? Ah! <laughs> Tara, only Bob. All right, let's throw the intro on. Each week, Catherine, for any of our audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And crazy. there is an old saying. I'm crazy for what it, many old sayings you like, well, where did that originate? There's an old saying. Don't piss on a hornet's nest. I thought it was don't piss in the wind. 
Well, no, there's there's don't piss on a hornet's nest. That's, that's an old one. Which is, you know, it's it's when people, you know, start shit that they probably sh shouldn't have started in the first fucking place. Because they should have known better. And you wonder, how do these phrases come into the lexicon? How do these become... Things that, it's it would seem self-evident already. How does a cliche become a cliche? Well, like this. This is from Vietnam. Bus passenger who urinated on a beehive or stung on some unfortunate places. Why would you do that? Is the question. We'll get there. Um, you would think most people would don't need to be told to wee on beehives. That's the very first line of the story. To wee on beehives. Well, it's coming from England. That's how they say that. Apparently, we expected too much from several bus pastors who received several bee stings to their private parts recently after their bus pulled over at the side of the road to allow male pastors to relieve themselves. One of them thought it would be a good idea to wee on a hive swarming with bees, at which point, well, you can guess what happened. Why do they keep saying wee? Is this a newspaper for four-year-olds? Well, that's what they, that, well, that's, they say in, in England. What are they going to do, say, take a slash? Well, yeah. You don't use that, they don't say that in, like, The Guardian. Well, no. They say urinate. Um, according to medics, 22 people who have been attacked by bees, 22 people, after stopping to relieve themselves on the highway in the central province of Guangyai, uh, Guang, Guangyai, Guangyai, oh, God, in Vietnam. Guangyai. Guangyai, thank you. Three of those stung had to be kept for the hop in the hospital for observation after suffering swollen body parts. Notice they don't say which body parts those are. This is a publication that has to say we. They're not going to tell you which body parts. The victim said that one of the men apparently thought it was amusing to urinate on a beehive. Not anymore, he doesn't. Don't whiz on the electric fence. This is just plain... <sighs> That's just a bad idea. We all have bad ideas sometimes, but normally there's a part of our brain that goes, yo, wait, don't do that. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. That would be stupid. That's going to get you stung in your dick. And the thing is, bees in Asia are fucking terrifying. They're big. They don't have normal bees. No, they don't have honeybees. They have, like, the Godzilla of bees over there. Like, there's a Japanese hornet that's this fucking big! You don't fuck with the bugs over there. They're insane. I want every man in the audience right now to imagine a stinging insect about this big coming right at their cock. I'm watching Dan's face. <laughs> Just right, making a, as, you, as it were, a beeline for your junk. Apparently the venom of Japanese hornets melt flesh. Which doesn't impress me because I had a spider rot out right. a large portion of my leg back in October. So, melting flesh. That, got the scar. I just, you, you gotta wonder. He was like, you know it was a hey y'all watch this moment. He was like, guys, guys, Jesus, Steve, we're just trying to try and take a piss. Would you leave us the fuck? Guys, guys, watch this. There's always that. There's always that person that wants to talk while you're peeing. Which is that's that ha that has happened to me rarely. I, I don't know if that's a guy, a, a female thing or a guy thing. When guys do it, everyone else is just like, What's wrong no, there are with chicks you? that do it from stall to stall, and you're just like, oh my god, shut up! I'm just trying to pee. Yeah, little little bit. It's that much worse if if you've been drinking because there's just that one girl who's totally drunk and wants to tell you everything going on in her brain and you're like I'm just trying to pee out these last three beers please and leave me in this case it's someone who wanted to pee on a hornet's nest or a bee's nest Just isn't that one of the books in the dragon tattoo trilogy the girl who pissed on the hornet's nest yeah, yeah. 
not a tree. Do you think get David Fincher to do that one? Oh, uh, god damn. All right. Do you read uh, questionable content? Mm, I don't think so. It's a webcomic. It's uh, done by a guy named Jeff Shocks. And okay. I, um, I have, but I don't regularly. Oh, you're going to make people sad. Well, the he um does a lot of different things. Uh, a lot of uh, projects. He's got a side band he works on. Uh, two web comics, and then it occurred to him the fact that the domain has now become available to red. It, it's a new domain on the internet called dot horse, like dot com dot net. Now there is dot horse. R r really? Yes. They're telling me the. I know the name of the book. We make jokes here. We're not completely literal. Oh, I know. It's... Oh, I know. But yeah, there is now a domain on the internet called, it, it's for dot horse. He looked at this and he saw an opportunity. And it would, you would think what he did with it, it's just one of those sort of things that happens on the internet. And people are just like, oh, that's funny. And they move on to the next thing. But not Walmart. Uh, never Walmart. Why the long face? Retailer says Walmart.horse domain infringes its IP. Actually... Why is there a Walmart.horse? That's what he did. That's what. Uh, artists found questionable content. Why? Falling into the crosshairs, or we should say the horsehairs, of retail behemoth Walmart. The mega retailer is demanding that Jeff Shocks discontinue any and all use of the walmart.horse domain, which renders it tumblers and displays a horse in front of a Walmart store. Um, this is what Jeff had to say about it. The idea behind the site started out as a conversation with a friend of mine. We were entirely amused by the new .horse TLD and decided to register a bunch of ridiculous domain names with it. As for its meaning, it's a piece of postmodern Dadaism, a nonsense art using found objects, in this case, publicly available images in the name of a mega corporation. Its purpose to provoke exactly the kind of response it has received, and I'm in doing so to parody the Walmart Corporation and its actions. Claiming no, that. Because I do love some good Dadaism. Claiming that Walmart.horse defames the Walmart brand somehow is the highest possible satire. And the fact that this accusation came from Walmart itself is a most delicious piece of irony. Walmart, however, is not laughing, is demanding that uh, Jacques stop using the domain within two weeks. Jacques responded to Walmart, saying the domain is an obvious parody and therefore falls under fair use. Publicly available images of a horse, a Walmart store, and comical music make it clear the site is meant to be a joke. They have to provide a disclaimer on the website explicitly stating this. If you have requests for any other animals you would like to see added to the image on the website, I would happily comply. Walmart.hippo? Walmart.hippo. I kind of want to start a website that does like floral arrangements and cookie baskets and call it gift.horse. So Walmart <coughs> saw this. This. Thanks for completely ignoring my shitty joke. I appreciate that. Whatever, fine, the moment's passed. You're a terrible boss, move on. Walmart saw this and decided that this somehow dilutes their brand. <laughs> well, they don't, horses is like one of the three things they don't sell. You can get your guns, you can get your glasses, you can get groceries. I just totally randomly picked all things that start with G. I don't know how I did that. But you cannot get a horse. And they don't want that kind of false advertising because then people are going to come in and be like, I need a horse. And they're going to like Thor is going to come in and be like, I need a horse. And they're going to be like, we don't sell horses. Do you have a large dog? I'll ride off of one of those. <laughs> we got we got Daryl in the back. <laughs> ride him. He's pretty big. And to me, all Walmarts are Southern. I don't know why. And Thor rides off on Daryl to save the world. 
southern boyfriend takes umbrage to the fact that I see all Walmarts as southern. He's offended. This this really is just no. I'm no. I don't. I don't believe there's ever been a uh, cease and desist sent to people of Walmart. You aware of that website? Yeah. That was kind of precious. Yeah. I don't think there's ever been a cease and desist sent to them. So why Walmart dot horse? Who is well, on? I guess people of Walmart more counts directly as a not satire, but I don't know commentary. Yeah, but who is sitting around at Walmart? And they're Walmart? not using the logo. They're not showing the Walmart sign in those pictures. But who is sitting around at Walmart's legal headquarters and saw Walmart dot horse and went, "Oh God, we got to make this stop." Uh uh-uh. uh no. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking Walmart. They're basically the Empire. I thought that was Disney. Or was it Comcast? I can't keep up they anymore. Have, they have like 62 lawyers that they keep in little cages. And feed them a scrap of bread once a week. And just give them an internet connection and be like, look for things. I, don't know. I just see like these disheveled, crazed lawyers with keyboards. I don't know. We found something, Master. We found something. Shall we sue, Master? Shall we sue? <laughs> Pretty much what you're dealing with, yeah. Uh, You've done well, Renfield. May I eat today? No. So, I... Something in... It's getting actually a little serious, this next one. But just for the fact that we both have recently had to deal with the uh, funerals for our parents and dealing with with all the wonderful, I say wonderful, stuff that comes along with it. I was fortunate in the fact that I'm an only child. And I didn't have to contend with other people on the estate having to deal with all that stuff. But even then, and I know your your whole dealing with the estate went rather, rather at least with family members went no, pretty. No, we're not done yet. Well, yeah, but it's gone rather smoothly, right? No Mostly, one's, yeah. Except, I mean, it's the hardest part has been paperwork, really, getting paperwork filed and that sort of thing. But mm-hmm. it's not like we're clawing each other's eyes out for stuff. So, you know? um, no, nobody, uh, nobody attempted to dig up the parents to find the real will, huh? No. Woman admits digging up dad's grave in search of, quote, real will. Lancaster, New Hampshire. Why is that something you would bury with you, you idiot? (laughs) That's the definition of a thing you leave behind. I just, Tara, look at the story and look at the last name. I just realized this. Their name's Nash. It's funny because it's you. Lancaster, New Hampshire. A woman who told police she dug up her father's grave in search of his real will, but found only vodka and cigarettes. Live guilty Monday. Melanie Nash, 53, one of the four accused in the plans to open Eddie Vault's Nash, Eddie Nash's vault in Colebrook, then rifle through his casket last May in a scene a prosecutor compared to an Edgar Allan Poe story. Police said she felt she was shorted in her share of the inheritance after her father died in 2004. They didn't find a will in the casket. Imagine! Why would you bury your will with you? That makes the opposite of sense. Yeah! Why would you bury vodka and cigarettes with you? Well, you know, people are. They put stuff in the casket. They're like, I want you to have this and remember this. Here's, you know, your your favorite ring. and Vodka and cigarettes, huh? I want you to remember me. Here's vodka and cigarettes. But the entire point of a will is that it doesn't go, it stays behind for people to access. Right. They don't put it in the grave with them. No. It's not no like reason to do that. 
This shit isn't Indiana Jones. This isn't national treasure. They're not <laughs> like, they, they, seriously, they're not doing this like, my true heirs will find my will and they will be entitled to my fortune. No. Was your father by chance the Holy Grail? Yes. <laughs> Was he buried in the Ark of the Covenant? Because then I get it. Uh, I also have to notice. We were in Ikea on Saturday and we're walking through. Have you ever been in an Ikea? Yeah. We were walking through the self-service section and we're looking like they're enormous. And we're looking for one particular thing. And I'm like, oh, I think it's right next to the Ark of the Covenant over there. <laughs> we were looking for one little tiny shelf in a mass of boxes and carts and children riding carts and humanity. <laughs> Pete, children riding carts and humanity. Yeah. And then we went and saw Craig Ferguson and it was awesome. I also want to know, people in the channel have pointed out the math to me, which didn't occur to me until just now. He died in 2004. Right. It's they, been a while. They dug him up in 2014. You know, it is entirely possible that it took that long to settle the estate. I'm not thinking... There were several properties to be liquidated, that kind of thing, that can hold it up for a really long time. It's entirely possible that they just settled this thing. Yeah, but what's what I'm thinking about is your father has been dead yeah, in that you are... box for 10 years. That's going to be a smell. And you're opening your dead dad's box 10 years later. What kind of an idiot are you? It's, it's not going to be pretty at all. And do you think, really, do you think that after you have defiled the grave, if by chance he did leave a will, a will in there, you come up clutching it in your hands like I was right, do you think anyone is really going to look at you like you are the good guy in this scenario? There's, I mean, you, you think that shit through. Would a piece of paper or a stack of paper even survive being locked in a box with a decomposing human? This is some Mythbuster shit that nobody wants to know the answer to. I don't even know if that will would be legible. Because <laughs> people liquefy your honor we found this will but it's covered in people juice so we're not entirely sure i don't think that's legally admissible no uh let's move on to even more stupidity god fucking it hurts tonight um kanye is huge kanye west kanye is a thing he is he is something that is just exploded I was watching Donald Glover's uh, comedy special this last weekend, and he uh, talked about how his mom, to be an asshole, put, like, a tiny scoop of Cocoa Puffs in a whole big plastic container of Kicks and shook it up. So the only Cocoa Puffs, they, they had they had to eat the Kicks to get the Cocoa Puffs. And he likened seeing you see one little Cocoa Puff in there. He's like, it looked like a Kanye concert. It's just one black. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> love him. Um... Speaking of Kanye concerts, eBay has had a little bit of problems with this. And you would think, how could eBay be having problems with Kanye concerts? Are we talking scalped tickets? Are we talking fake backstage passes? No, no. eBay overrun with bagged air from Kanye West concert. What? After one auction reaches... $60,000. The site is inundated by copycat sellers. Kanye West fans are used to seeing $1,000 price tags attached to the rapper's Air Yeezy sneakers when they're put up on sale for eBay, but the auction site is now being overrun by sellers offering up plastic bags full of air allegedly captured at West's concerts. Gag started Friday when one ambitious seller attempted to sell a zipper seal bag with Air from Kanye show with 90 bidders driving the price tag to over $60,000. Is this a thing? <clears throat> Is this the new drug the kids are doing today? You're huffing Kanye's air. Air that has had Kanye in it. 
that's that's not a thing. I hope that's not a thing. The auction was ultimately. What do you do with that artifact? You put it on a shelf, label. It's... A bag of air. While that auction was out here, we just call that our governor. <laughs> oh, nice. Chris Christie, you so hey, crazy. Hey, New Jersey. eBay has since been flooded with similar auctions promising airbag from a Giza show. Even though the copper cats lack certificate of authenticity proving the air, likely carbon dioxide, was grabbed at a West concert. eBay has apparently stopped trying to swat down the new bagged air auctions, so... Buyer beware at this point. <laughs> now, if you really wanted to make some money, you'd sell a bag of the shitty ass bleach they used on Kim Kardashian's hair. Oh. You seen that poor girl? Oh. It did bad things to her hair. Like she had a good head of hair and they have fucked it up. And supposedly they were going around Paris trying to get someone to fix it and they were really really big name Paris stylists refusing they're like no i don't know that's already train wreck i i, I it's really bad and then on top of it she showed up at a fashion show where jaron leto jared leto was debuting his new platinum blonde hair which was way better <sighs> thing was just a big old mess poor girl sixty thousand dollars for a bag of air no certificate of authenticity, as if that kind of matters, but pretty much what someone could have done was gone to their cupboard, taken a Ziploc bag, breathed into the motherfucker, took a picture and put that shit on eBay, and you was going to chuck out 60k for it. Dude, I wish I'd thought of that and just took a couple years off work. Because that's $30,000 salary for two years. But what's even stupider is the people who, after it got taken down, now everyone's like, oh, God, they're buying this air? Hell, I've got to get my air up there, too. I'll get money for this. This is a cold rush. I should have collected air at the Craig Ferguson show on Saturday. You should have. God damn it. I could have had genuine Scottish dude air. <laughs> this, the, the, the fact this was a gold rush on eBay... They're like, holy shit, we gotta get a piece of this action. The internet's a really weird place sometimes. <sighs> Kids are stupid. We we've all <laughs> we we've all I know there's no I, I didn't have a bridge there. I just really just Damn kids today. We all pretty much acknowledge generally when we were kids, we were stupid. There are kids now, they are stupid. That's part of being a kid. You're stupid. I was watching kids running around the Ikea on the hand trucks, using them like amusement park rides and just waiting for the screaming and the blood to start. <laughs> and I'm like, where are your parents? Why is nobody telling you not to do that? Because I'm old. And that was my thought. Somebody's going to die in the Ikea. Now, teenagers are... Counterintuitively, they get a little bit stupider before they start getting smarter. And this has got to be... Are we explaining puberty to the audience? Honestly, I think some of them, that would be very helpful. I think so. We got some whippersnappers out there. Teen burglars steal cremated remains thinking they were drugs. St. Peter's, Missouri, three teenagers thought they were stealing cocaine, but actually took a man's cremated <gasps> remains. Oh, no. Devin Gassell, 17, and a 15 and 16-year-old were accused of breaking into a St. Peter's home in November. Police say they stole an Xbox 360, prescription drugs, jewelry, and the ashes of the homeowner's father, which were being stored in a wooden box. The thieves realized their mistake and reportedly threw the cremains out of a car window. Well, that's horrible. Police tracked the teens down after one of them used the Xbox online. The IP address was traced. 
are cremated remains aren't I would I mean I've never seen cremated remains, but wouldn't they be gray? Gray. And don't they usually have like teeth and stuff in them? Yeah. Unless they do the crushy thing, they don't right. really which but normally because parts of you don't always burn so completely. Right. So there's little people chunks. <laughs> oh no, wet, God. Stretch. Ace that pain. Resemble cocaine, as I understand it. Ace Payne in the channel just said something that hurt me. Grandpa finally went outside. Oh. Ow. And then you just dump some poor dude out the car mm. window? That's fucked up. So they're in the car, speeding away from their crime. One of them rolls a dollar bill, tries to snort Grandpa realizes it's not cocaine and flings the dead guy out the window. Well, you know, Keith Richards claims that he snorted his father's ashes. Keith Richards snorted anything that would stand still. <laughs> I mean, that's Keith Richards. He'll snort fucking Ajax if you got it. Fuck's sake. If you, if you don't move very often, if you're in the Rolling Stones and you don't move very often, you have to look over your shoulder because Keith's going to be there with a dollar bill on your shoulder. Like, Keith, fuck off, mate. We're not, <laughs> I'm not dead yet. Fuck off. It's dandruff, Keith. It's fucking dandruff. The fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. <sighs> well, something we learned from Craig Ferguson, apparently all the Rolling Stones are afraid of Keith Richards. <laughs> <laughs> they should be. They're all really afraid of him. They should be. They don't want to piss him off, including Mick Jagger. Just, everything about this story is stupid. Everyone in it is stupid. Well, except the yeah. person who got robbed. Everyone else, you're idiots. Yeah, you don't take home the Xbox that you stole and log on to live, you fucking moron. They're, they report it stolen and they'll find it. They gonna find you. They gonna find you. At least they didn't log on to Facebook from his home like we've covered about yeah. three times. <sighs> Snow Dude, this guy's cocaine sucks. I wonder, though, if you snorted the ashes of someone who did a lot of drugs. There's actually would there be some mild high from the residual? You should read Transmetropolitan. It's a book by uh, Warren Ellis. There's actually a... Yeah, I read that for a little while. I didn't follow it for very long, but I did read, like, the first story arc. There's there's a funny bit in there. To his eyeballs and shit. There, there's a funny bit in there where the guys are talking about uh, thing, do anything for drugs, and they were in orbit, and they're like, we found these ashes. They were Timothy Leary's, and God help us, we smoked them. We smoked them all. <laughs> Someone's planning that shit someday. Once we achieve Wait, space flight. Gonna, that would work. <laughs> Don't wonder about this, Tara. That's. But I do, though. That... do wonder. We don't need to know. Our last story tonight. It's like when you see a really, really, really short chick with a really, really tall dude, and you just really want to ask them, like, how does that work when you guys have sex? Like, I can't make the physics of that work. Just tell me about it. Sometimes you just need to know. Our last story this week. I think we it's pretty much a fair bet that any time, any time, God tells you to do something, you personally, you should not do that thing. We've covered this repeat. What? I don't agree with that necessarily. Yeah, but it, you notice it's never God telling Joan you. Joan of Arc heard the voice of God. Yeah, but these days it's like God isn't saying, you know, feed the poor, clothe the hungry. These days God is saying, hey, dude, go steal an ambulance. Okay, well, God's almost never going to tell you to do that. Unless it's to pick up someone who's seriously wounded that nobody knows about. I just, it it seems to me that lately, the last I like that the chat is 
informing me how people with vast height differences have sex. They're like giving me options. They're, someone's actually giving me the particular positions that work. Oh, what the fuck is auto that? Autoplay. Fucking autoplay. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, autoplay. Um, a man is accused... Trying to learn how to have sex with really short people. A man is accused of stealing and crashing an ambulance in Midtown. He says he has a good reason. <laughs> the Houston Fire Department said the ambulance was stolen from Main Street. The ambulance recovered about 30 minutes later, where it crashed into a three-man mover's truck. I was upstairs working when I heard a loud bang, says Randy Bingham, a witness. I've never seen an ambulance involved in a collision like that, especially the way it happened. Police said the suspect was taken into custody. Lord Jesus Christ stole me, told me to steal the ambulance, he told a KHOU news photographer. The next sentence is going to explain everything. One of the three men movers was injured in transport the hospital. There's no... Really? Lord Jesus Christ told him to steal the ambulance <laughs> and save the ambulance, ambulance, and save that man. Of course, had he not caused the accident. Don't the Lord work in different <laughs> ways, Nash? Don't get all muddled up in the details. <laughs> and you're be like, why did he flood the whole world and kill everybody when he made us? Don't get caught up in shit like that. Mysterious ways. Yeah, but I'm thinking. You know, this, all of this shit God keeps telling people to do seems to be, in the lately, really dickish kind of things. Well, I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility to say that God is both bored and very annoyed with us. So you're thinking that God is... In like, God's up there just going like, you know what? You know fucking what? <laughs> Fine. You you want to just run around and be batshit crazy? I fucking show. I literally invented batshit crazy because I invented everything. So let's do this. Zash in the channel. Why does God need an ambulance? I was waiting. Don't for you that know one. that joke about the guy in the flood? They came by to rescue him. No, no, God's gonna save me. They came by in a boat to rescue him as the waters rose. No, no, God's gonna save me. The water was up to the roof. He's sitting on his roof. The he helicopter comes. No, no, God's gonna save me. He drowns and he dies and he gets to heaven and he says, God, why didn't you save me? And God says, what are you talking about? I sent the, I sent the Red Cross. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. I'm, I'm sitting here, though, thinking that there's Jesus up in heaven and going, hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Dad, come here. Dad. Watch this shit. It's going to be funny. Watch. Dude, this is going to rock. Jesus, what are you doing? No, Dad, watch. I promise it'd be funny. It'd be funny. See, watch this shit. Jesus. Can, is it a time you moved no, out and got a job, Jesus? I don't think that I could blame God at this point if he was just up there trolling us. <laughs> because we've kind of earned it. <laughs> We kind of deserve it. Ah, uh, okay, Reverend Mal, there's a nice reference there. Jesus trolled my hot rod. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jesus take the wheel. That's not how that works. Ooh, there we go. But <laughs> somebody was injured and ended up needing an ambulance, didn't they? <laughs> sort of a chicken of the egg thing going on there. Don't get caught up in the minutia. I was watching the uh, the Rick Offerman special on Netflix this week, and um, he was talking about Jesus Take the Wheel, about that song, about how this chick's in a car and it goes into a skid on an icy patch and she raises up her hands and says, Jesus, take the wheel. And he says, well, no. <laughs> Is that what that song's about? Yeah. I thought it was a metaphor. Yeah. She... I, I haven't heard that song, but I assumed from the title that it was like a metaphor, like Jesus, lead me down the right path in my life. I didn't no. realize it was literal. And she's got her baby in the back seat. She's like, Jesus, take the wheel. And he says, you know, no, you take the wheel. You can pray for Jesus all you want, but why you do that? Turn into the skid. Yeah. 
trust in God, but lock your car. That's the thing. Faith is not an excuse for stupidity. Because God ain't going to save you from your own stupidity. That's not his job. He gave you a brain so that you could use it. Yeah. To not be stupid. And I, if God, is, I, I think, yeah, the first thing we learned this week is if God is telling you to steal an ambulance, maybe you want to think that one through just a little bit. I don't know. He was right this time, though. <laughs> You're not going to let that one go, are you? Listen, the facts speak for themselves. Uh, we learned that kids, you can't snort everything. Stop trying. Just don't snort anything. I don't understand that drug delivery system. The whole, you know what really creeps me out? I don't understand out? snorting things. I don't. You know what totally creeps me out about the whole cocaine I don't even thing? like fucking allergy nasal spray. Creeps me out. I might be wrong about this. Your mom did rehab, so she might, she worked in a rehab center, so she might know this. Isn't it there, like, if you do that enough, you could cause a hole? Oh, yeah. You so just you burn can... a hole in your septum. She oh, God! Put a tissue up one side and pull it out the other. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, yeah, no. Burn right through your fucking septum. Why would, that's not, that's, no. No, 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 no. Ah, 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 don't do that. Stop and anything. during heroin chic in the 90s, the models, because they didn't, they couldn't have track marks. That wasn't sexy. So they would literally like shoot into the eyeballs. eyeballs. Ah. Ah. Yeah. And now kids are shoving stuff soaked in vodka up their ass because anything to not be sober, apparently. We've learned that if you buy bag air on eBay... Make sure you get a certificate of authenticity because it could be air from a Kanye concert or someone could have farted into a bag. You don't know. And it's not like you can check because once you open that bag, the air escapes and it becomes worthless. Yep. You got to take, yeah, get that. It's not like you can open that bag and see if it smells like weed and sweat and ego. <laughs> so Hollywood, essentially. Um, we've learned that if perhaps you think your loved one left another will, the one place it's not going to be is in the casket! Unless you are actually in an Agatha Christie novel. Yeah, seriously. And you're probably not. Don't dig up dad! Don't do that shit! She's snoring back there. She doesn't care. She doesn't have to hear it. We've learned that Whatever you do, if it has Walmart's name on it, they will try to sue you. Unless you do people of Walmart, weirdly. Yeah, I know. You would think that would actually be def defamation to the brand. I guess because they don't use the logos or anything. They kind of skate. They kind of skate under the radar there. And finally, we've learned that just when you think that the old sayings have no merit in today's reality. I don't think that's a real saying. Don't piss on a hornet's nest. I think you're making that up. Google it. I don't think that's a real thing. Google it. Like, I think that was only a saying in your household. Google that shit. Like I found out as a grown up that things my mother taught us were that were like rules of society. Not at all. Just shit she made up. Oh, please. Please. Example. Um, oh God, now you're putting me on the spot. I, I, I must hear these. I don't know. I can't think of any now. I should, I should have been ready for that, but you know, th there were things and I'll tweet them if I think of any, but that don't... I honestly thought were, were rules and other people were like, no, that's, it's that's, all that's fun. Actually not a thing. It's all fun and games until dad sets the dog on fire. <laughs> That's not a real saying. Fucking was in my house. It was in my house.